I am taking a nature walk by myself, which I have never done before. And I just felt like I wanted to just be out in nature. Today's Sunday, and no, I did not go to church today, but this has become my new way of connecting with, with nature. This is my way of connecting with myself, and this is my way of connecting with God, and I know that people aren't gonna like it, and I'm not gonna agree with it, and I'm totally cool with that. However, this is how I do things. If you wanna connect with yourself, and if you want to just find that ground, and you just, you feel like you're missing something, maybe what you're missing is already inside, and you just need to realize that, and you need to just pull that out. And so for me, this is my way of being grounded, and it makes me feel really good. I'm a city girl. I'm used to fast pace. I'm used to rush, rush, rush all the time. Like, I rush even when I'm not really going anywhere. When I'm in nature, I have to consciously tell myself, like, okay, Tina, just walk slow. Take a look around. See the beauty in everything. There's a lot of lakes over here in this park. It's just very woodsy. There's a lot of mosquitoes out here too, so I probably should have brought some spray. I just feel like I'm at peace. Like I just feel so much more calm. This makes me happy. This makes me feel grounded. This is my meditation. I think that maybe you should try taking a walk. Try walking through nature. Try just taking in your surroundings especially if you're from a city like me just absorb the energy of the trees and the nature around you it's something that i've never embraced before like i will go near a tree and just touch it and just think to myself like wow this is amazing this is something that was created for us we just keep on moving and pushing through with our day and I totally get it but we have to learn how to just stop and just breathe it in and just release and this is a good way to help you heal this is a good way of releasing if you feel like you have a lot of toxicity maybe you're going through depression maybe you just are not feeling like yourself and you feel like you need something to make you feel more at peace with yourself maybe what you need is to just take a nice walk through nature meditate sit and relax and so I brought with me my journals so that I could write there's so many different ways that you can find yourself and that thing that you're missing like I said could be inside so keep that in mind as I am on my nature walk I actually do have something that I wanted to share with you guys something that happened to me last night that really 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 triggered me i'm not gonna say who it was it's one of the viewers who watch the videos in the channel i've spoken to this person several times you know he's he's pretty cool but he is a member an active member of the icoc and when i say active i mean like he's not trying to get out but this person watched my recent video with Ezra, where Ezra was speaking about his experience as a campus student in the ICOC. So this viewer sent me a private message and he basically was expressing to me that he was really upset. He didn't like what Ezra was saying in the video, even though Ezra was expressing his personal experience, which we all have our own personal experiences and we all have a right to share it. So he started to rant and his rant was basically that he, in general, overall felt like Ezra was generalizing all of the ICOC and that he was using his experience as a way to say that all the ICOC is like this. He felt like it's lies. He was making the ICOC look bad. So my whole thing is, 
it's a free country like anyone can click on my videos my videos are not only for ex members obviously anyone can click on it the message i share in my videos are mainly for people who are skeptical of the church and people who have left and are thinking of leaving is it raining oh no it's raining this individual that sent me the message basically was really upset and he came peacefully he came respectfully but he still triggered me the reason why i was triggered is because this person started to say that ezra should not have been baptized that he wasn't ready to be baptized because he clearly did not understand the commitment to the church i was like wow i don't understand what commitment that is he said you have to be committed to the church and if you don't understand the commitment then you should not be become baptized you should not be a member you have to go to all the services you can only date within the church you're not supposed to date outside the church and this person basically proved exactly what I have been saying for the longest freaking time. He proved that the ICOC and the ICC are in fact a cult. What church that is legit do you know that has commitments and rules? Not to mention, these things are not biblical. The ICOC will say it's biblical and they'll say, well, this is in the Bible and they'll show you. They twist up everything they say and make it seem as though it's biblical, as though it's right, as though it's accurate. They're very good at twisting things and making you seem crazy. Then he tried to use the example of marriage, saying that when you get married, you have the ring, you have the dress, you have the cake, you have the, the wedding ceremony, the reception. And so he says, a commitment, isn't it? Now, I'm married. And I did get all those things. I had a wedding. I have a ring. I had a dress. I had a cake. But that is not the freaking commitment. The commitment is my husband's loyalty to me. That is a commitment. I did not understand his logic behind the things he was saying. But it... It made sense at the same time, considering the fact that he is a member of this church. I got so upset. I was like, I can't even talk to you right now. I can't because your level of thinking is on a whole nother plane than my level of thinking. I don't understand how you can possibly compare a commitment to the church and a commitment to being married. That just goes to show you that the ICOC are hypocrites. They say that they don't follow tradition of man, but they do. Because if you can see a traditional wedding as a commitment and as a way of proving loyalty that you're ready to get married, then you also believe that by following these rules of the ICLC, in order to be baptized, you got to make sure you come to church all the time. You got to have a discipling partner. You must marry or date someone within the church. That's also tradition. That does not prove commitment to God. That proves a commitment to the church. I have to defend my church because I love my church and I'm a part of it. Okay, so you're defending your church. You're defending the people. You're not defending your faith. Now, it's different if you defend your faith. That's totally different from if you defend a church. People wake the hell up and realize that that is co-activity right there. If you join a church, there should not be a commitment to the church. There should be a commitment to God because that's what your faith is about. It's not about what you join. That doesn't make any sense. So the fact that Ezra decided to leave the church that meant that he wasn't ready to get baptized so 
in order to get baptized, you have to commit to the ICOC. But what does the ICOC have to do with you getting baptized? How about a person get baptized because this is them coming to God and this is them saying, I love God and I love my faith. This is what I do. This is what I believe and that's what it's about. If you can join a church and say, okay, I commit to the rules of the church. I commit to coming to midweek. To Bible talk I commit to doing Bible studies with people oh and I commit to only date within this church if you could commit to all these things and then get baptized then maybe you're not getting baptized for the right reasons see you don't need to do those things to get into heaven and people might not want to listen to me because they're gonna be like oh well this is an ex-member and an ex-christian why would we listen to her you don't have to be a scientist to know this you don't need to be committed to a church in order to go to heaven. That's not what it's about at all. And I've been saying that from the beginning when I was a Christian, and I'm saying it now as an ex-Christian. You should be free to leave your church and to go wherever the hell you want to go. Yes, if you're a Christian, of course, you might prefer to date another Christian, but do they have to be a member? No, because the members are not perfect themselves. It triggered me because I, I started having flashbacks. I started thinking about all the people that are being hurt and the people that are going through things. They say they have good intentions. They say they love. They say they care. But they have a very funny way of showing it. Ezra still believes in God and he still is looking to go into another church. And I don't see how by him leaving the ICOC means that he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to get baptized. That is 100% brainwashing. Understand that my videos are not about pulling people out of the ICOC. My videos are about warning people. My videos are about helping people who want to leave, helping people who've left. Because I know firsthand how difficult it is when you don't have anyone to be there for you, to support you when you've left this type of church i know how it is to feel alone through a journey when you're questioning everything now i totally get it and that's why someone needs to do it why not me my videos are not about icoc members being good being bad being nice being mean it's about how many people are out there that have been hurt and continue to be hurt there's too much justifying left and right well, this person wasn't ready to be baptized. Well, this person didn't read the Bible. Well, people are people, and they're gonna do things regardless, and no one is perfect, and they're a church, and you have to focus on God. How many excuses we gotta keep hearing? Seriously, how many? I have a hard time trying to ignore the reality of what's going on. People just need to understand. If someone's sharing their story, that's their story and they have a right to share it. You have a right to share your story. You have a right to feel upset. You have a right to feel hurt. You have a right to any emotions you feel from this church. You have a right to leave and to find another place where you feel comfortable because what is the point of going to a church that you don't feel comfortable and you're not being spiritually fed if, if your whole point of being there in the first place is for God? I want you guys to continue to share your stories and to say, this is what I went through, and this is how I felt, and this is how I feel right now. I want this to be a thing. Like, I want, I want every person that really has a message and has something to say, even if you're scared, do that thing that scares you the most. I want you to just come out and be like, boom, this is what I went through. This is what happened to me, and this is where I am now. Don't allow anyone to intimidate you. You share your truth, you, you share your story, you get through it because you can and you will. Don't allow your past experience, the things you went through in your life to hold you back and to stop you from living, to stop you from enjoying life, to stop you from experiencing it. You want to do more than just live your life, you want to experience it, you want to actually enjoy it. You want to experience the world. Why can't you have that? So many people go through things in life and then it's like we're so focused on the negativity of it. We're so focused on what we went through 
that we don't realize that there's so much more life to explore that we haven't even touched the surface yet and we haven't even reached the surface. Don't silence yourself for anybody. Don't let anyone intimidate you out of speaking your truth for nobody.